discussions about things like Git for data and versioning for data for 15 years personally. So, um, and we kind of had a look at, at what, um, what was out there already in terms of versioning for data. So we had things like data in Git, so sticking your shapefile in a code repository and pushing it around or CSV file. But they're not actually very helpful solutions. It works fine if it's you and you know exactly what you need to do and you know exactly who changes it and you're the only person who really does it. It doesn't work if you're sending it to another organization. And then there's some things that have been inspired by Git. Um, and we decided to, to kind of leave that because of the work that's being put in to make Git better over time. Um, we can build on that and focus on the, the geospatial aspects rather than having to reinvent everything they've done and invent everything we want to do. And so that's um, GeoGig, which was around a few years ago, developed by um, Boundless, um, was one of these kind of inspired by Git. So doing it better potentially, but having to redo all that work to get up to a basic level of useful things. And there's some um, ones specifically kind of focused on machine learning um, and data science, which uh, are kind of good for them, but not, not necessarily for day-to-day -day people working with practical data. And often it's developers you have to deal with data rather than um, data people. Uh, so we spent a couple of years kind of building uh, CAT and our kind of principles are, it's built on Git, as I said, so that we can focus on the data and geospatial as a project, and we can leave, leverage others to focus on vision. We want to maintain compatibility so that if you are a, a software developer, you are a Git user, then it should be pretty familiar. And, but it won't be identical. Data users have different needs. Um, and we're dealing with data sets at the end of the day, not code. We want it to be easy to install, so it kind of comes on uh, Windows and Mac OS and Linux, and it has all your batteries included. And to be clear, CAD isn't a big data solution for people with, with huge data sets, terabyte sized tables. We're focused on the data sets you're using regularly, and you don't have bespoke tooling for, you don't have internal developers who are supporting these systems. So we want it so that you can start using CAD as one person and your team, and then maybe it can spread to your organization but nobody needs to really know that. You can use it by yourself. Card is open source, and we want it to work just as powerfully for Arctis and AutoCAD users as it does for our QGIS and PostGIS friends. Um, so far at coordinates, we've acid tested Card against tens of thousands of small and large data sets with years of version history we already maintain. And um, as a team, we're kind of, we have a shared interest in kind of making this better. So I'm gonna do a quick demo if this will work right. So we're gonna... Yeah, yeah this is gonna be exciting. I might need a chair. <laughs> and I might need to do one more thing, which is... Turn back on. Okay, so I've got Peter here, Kurt here. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to create a new cat repository. And if I go into my cat repository, I can see there's not much here. There's a readme file which says there's not much here. And you can um, kind of see what's, gives you a little bit of an introduction about what you might want to be able to do with cart. And then um, happily, I've got some um, tape files in another directory. So I'm going to import them into my cart repository. Um, and For message importing. And so cat trucked away. 
And now I have a new package file. I'm going to make this a bit bigger. Sorry. So I've got a geo package file there. And if I um, run a normal tool, I can see that um, I've got three uh, layers that have been imported into my geo package. And I'll talk a little bit about what the geo package means um, in a second, but we can go to QGIS. And uh, it's just a geo package. So, and we're going back to later. So here's my geo package and uh, we're going to add some layers. We've got three layers here. Going to add them to our map. 100% of the time, Q just puts them in the wrong order. I'm just going to change the style slightly so you might actually be able to see something. There we go. Okay, so we have our layers in here. Um, and we're in QGIS, we can uh, do edits. So I'm gonna find um, a road and I am going to select a feature. So that one, I think I'm gonna bring up the attribute table and some edited ones. And I'm going to say we're going to change this lane count on this road to two. Um, don't do that. And we're going to, sorry, here we go. We're going to save our changes. And it's just saved it into our geo package. And if we go back and we can do count status, and it shows that I've made one change to my road center lines. I can do a diff, um, and so I can see what the difference is. I've changed one of the attributes, and I can get different different formats. I can get it as GeoJSON as well. Um, and you can compare the old version and the new version. So you can start building this into systems and workflows if that's your thing. And I'm, I committed that, I saved it, and I can see it's a bit bigger again, um, that the change I just made here builds on top of our initial import. And so that's kind of, um, that's the really easy initial thing. I can create some changes. You can see that it's got who changed it and when it was changed, and it's got my message, and I can see what's um, there, and I can jump back and forth through time as well. So it's not the window of image. Uh, yeah. And so do the demo. So our working copy, which in this case was our geo package, is kind of where you work and edit your data. And then different repository users can have different working copies. So uh, I might be working with Geo package. Somebody else might have a, a Postgres database. Somebody else, and hopefully not too long, will be able to have a Esri file Geo database. And we can all work on the same data. Um, we also support point cloud data and raster data is coming soon. And so again, different ecosystems and different users can kind of work together on the same repository. We have this concept of spatially filtered clones. And this sounds really complicated, but um, what it actually means is if I have a nationwide data set, but I'm working only in this area of like Calvin Grove Park, then I can just pull down the data that's relevant to that and I can work on it and version it and do everything else without having to carry around the whole country because it's not actually very interesting to me. But I'm still linked to that, the data it came from. So it's not like I've copied it and cropped this bit out and forever onwards they shall be different. They're still part of the larger data set. So for vectors and tables, um, we've kind of gotten the zero to 100 gig size, um, and that works kind of OK. We have things that we support different types of columns and fields. We support coordinate systems. You can change 
um, what you're modeling in your data. So you can add new fields or remove them or update them. We can import from the various systems and including all the usual suspects. And one of the funky features is you could, if you're, say, your data supplier sent you a new shapefile every month, you could just import that into your cat repository over and over again. And we'd figure out the differences and track those changes over time. Um, as I mentioned, I don't know why the screenshot's not there, but uh, we have you know, this, uh, point cloud data sets um, is built on cloud optimized point clouds. And so that means that in future, we're going to be able to stream data to browsers and direct it to QGIS and stuff, supporting terabyte size point clouds. And some of that stuff lives in the cloud as well. So it doesn't, you don't have to kind of drag it around to your, to your local systems. Um, if you're a point cloud aficionado, come and see me later. Um, and I'm gonna do, uh, oh, are we doing for time? Uh, we're good, okay. So I'll do another very quick demo. Just to show you that um, point cloud stuff. Over here. That's. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, clone a repository that in this case, it happens to be on my computer because I don't trust the internet, but imagine it's far, far away. And I'm going to put in basically an extent that says that um, this is the only area that I care about. Um, and that was really, really fast. No, it wasn't. What's going on here? Uh, maybe, but probably because I copied and pasted it and something went bad. Okay. Yeah. Down the right place. Ah. Okay, because I've copied the wrong thing. Okay, so it did some magic things, but the cool part is um, this is like about an 18 gig point cloud uh, data set with thousands of tiles, and it's about this fault line in Mexico. Um, but I've said basically I only want a little area of it, and so I can go into my um, Agua Blanca, um, and I can see that. In fact, it's found that Kat figured out that I only need three of those point cloud tiles to match my area, and those are the ones it's gone and got. But it's still part of the larger data set. Um, and now, because I'm not trying to load um, 3,000 tiles into QGIS's 3D point cloud view, which, as uh, Tom mentioned, is a terrible idea, um, you could maybe work with just the ones you're interested in um, and save yourself a lot of, a lot of hassle. Okay, so let's go back to there. Uh, where's it going? There we go. And so our kind of roadmap files. Come on. Um, as I mentioned, we got QGIS plugin, um, and that's already kind of there, and works pretty well. So you can add and remove stuff. Um, you can do commits in QGIS, and you can do that, that sort of stuff. Um, we've also, we're working on uh, plugins for Acro and FME, so you can kind of get started with interacting with your data sets through CART from there. Um, we have file geodatabases as a working copy, so you can collaborate with your ESRI friends. Um, raster and grid data is coming. Um, a cat repository is a Git repository, so there's nothing stopping you from pushing it to GitHub or um, a network drive that you use for Git already or SSH server or anything. So, you, um, but we're going to release, I guess, some more tools and mostly documentation about how to kind of optimize it for larger data sets. For small ones, it's, um, it's good to go with anything you're using. Um, we also want to support files and documents and metadata and styles and licenses and other stuff that kind of comes along with data sets. So the idea is you can bring it all in together and get all the pieces that you need for working with your data in kind of one go. Um, 
And the other thing is looking at interlinking data. So I have a project. I go and get data from all these people, um, which might be also my, my own team and other stuff. And I want to be able to link these repositories together so that I'm not duplicating the data. And I, they can update theirs, but it forms part of mine without having to, to kind of divorce it from, from where it came from. And the other thing that we're working on is um, extended coordinate system support. And so uh, allowing you to, to have a working copy that's in a different coordinate system from, from the actual data that, that you are kind of given. And so I'll just really quickly show the QGIS plugin. It's kind of cool. And so it's in the plugin store. You can uh, install it from there. Success. And that will actually install Cap for you as well. So yeah. yeah. And um, we can create new repositories. We can clone repositories. And so um, in this case, I'm going to add the one that we just created before. And I can do things like show the different logs. I can review, um, show changes introduced by each um, commit. So I can see that in this case, I changed one of these attributes in one commit. And um, if there's a geometry change as well, you can also kind of see it using transparency or swipes and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and that's what I had to talk about. Thank you. We had some live demos. That's great. <laughs> great. Um, do we have any questions, Robert? Hi. Derek, if you change the data structure instead of track that, mm -hmm. so would it report back to you and say you've added a field? Yeah, ba basically that. And obviously, if you're um, working with somebody else, then you might have to like tell them. But but in principle, um, it'll track that over time. So if you check out an older revision, then it'll go back to the scheme you had then. And if you check out a new one, you'll get the new one. And over time, you'll be able to see that you added uh, that field, and then maybe you populated it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think like code, there's there's changes that are simple of potentially people editing different things at the same time. If you're making changes to schemas or you're both editing the same river street feature building, then um, you're gonna have to help reconcile those differences, right? So at the end of the day, you're just gonna have to have an agreement of like, is this one newer or older or better or worse. Um, but yeah, the system supports those, but the conflict resolution stuff is um, is totally built into CAR and it works. Um, but at the end of the day, a human's going to make a decision about it. Um, the work you've done is, is incredibly cool. Um, that solves a lot of problems for where I'm working and other things I've done in the past. Is really yeah, I'd really like to talk to anyone who, who wants to have a chat about, um, yeah, versioning problems. Um, and feel free to email me as well. So. Um, so that, that's really nicely timed because we've got coffee. But do we have any other questions? Yes. Can you burn, so you say it's built on top of it, and that means it has a lot of things on site as well, so you can do like scripts or scripts. Uh, conceptually, yes, but not not what we've done at the moment. So yeah, I think it's something further down the line. We've we've talked to some people who are trying to put code and data together, and um, I think we'll probably. To support that nicely, we'll probably need to get into our work around like interlinking data sets and figure out how something could sit, sit inside Git, which might require some changes to Git over time, but that's it's okay. Yeah. So not right now, but ideally in the future. Any other questions? Just with the report data and bring it in, obviously in the shape files and we're working yeah. with geopathies. Is there an internal format that holds events, or is that something you can figure can you set different people who are working in different Yeah, so CART stores it internally and that's what it transfers around. And then the working copy is whatever your user wants it to be. So you could be editing your repositories in GeoPackage, and I could be um, using a Postgres database. And when we do our commits and pushes and pulls and fetches and stuff, then it um, will go through that that kind of um, internal format. Yeah. 
And is it storing it? Would it be storing those shape files back to shape files or get some other format? No, it stores it um, as like a fairly optimized internal format. Yeah. And then when somebody gets it, wants it as a shape file again, then it'll generate a shape file from that. Yeah. Cool. For any revision in your history or. Remember, means it remembers what the long column names were. Think it out. Yeah, yeah. So we don't have working copy of shapefiles. <laughs> you may have noticed, but it's on our list. No, I mean the, the idea is that that we can say like, hey, uh, you're working in the same format which has long column names, and um, sorry, and you're working in shapefiles. We get to choose a whole eight letters at a time. Um, then, uh, <laughs> then we'll, the idea is that. Um, we'll go, okay, well, we need to generate a short one, but we know it was tied to the long one originally so that when you make your change, we can sync it up. And obviously this isn't gonna work perfectly for everything forever, but we'll do our best step and 99% of things will work fine. And the idea is that Cat will tell you if you can't use a shape file for your next company. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on behalf of the whole room, I would say. <laughs> Any final question? Okay, no. Go. Can I ask if anyone can guess what is on his T-shirt? The location. You shouldn't have to guess. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those mythical islands that never shows up on your map. Yes. <laughs> I whole, just wanted to see if people can still whole Tumblr uh, about yeah maps with that New Zealand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've got coffee and cake side, so we have our break until.